Hi everyone, welcome to part two of our festive hair colouring page from Johanna Basford's um, weekly planner and in Johanna's Christmas. Now we have, um, today I'm planning on doing this sort of circle background behind the hair and I'm having a little think about, there are sort of several approaches, well lots, but in my, my thoughts I could do like the ground that the hair's sitting on so that it sort of grounds him so that he's not just floating in the sky or I could just do a background it doesn't matter because it's just a circle design and it's not a scene so I'm not sure which to do um, <laughs> so I think I'm actually going to just do a sky background and forget about the ground because for the ground I would use green and there's a lot of green that's going to be going on around here so I'm just going to do a background and if you feel that you would rather do a um, a ground then you can just get your ruler draw a line and color it green put some grass on that sort of thing if you want to but I'm going to do a I want a uh, sky that's fairly dark because we've got stars but the stars I'm thinking are more Christmassy than night timey if you understand what I mean so I'm going to do a graduating colour through from this blue which is the um, number 33 which is the cobalt blue through purples to pink so it's just going to go upwards um, so I'm going to start um, while I'm talking um, there are different ways you could actually maybe it's easier not to do it that way I'm going to change my mind already I'm going to go around the edge of the circle in the 33 and take it through to the centre the centre is about here I think so the best thing to do with this is to try and get your areas of each colour a similar size so my plan is to make it dark here and then graduate it out to a light blue which I would then blend with my next colour which is the purple so I'm going to work around the edge and do about that width of colour all the way around okay so uh, it'll take a bit of time and patience but this isn't a huge design if you are working in the book it is a bigger design so that can make it a bit more tricky in order to make it easier you could um, use pastels um, soft pastels it's a bit quicker than pencils um, or you could just persevere with pencil it's completely up to you use a watercolor pencil would make it quicker and in Johanna's tutorial that I was telling you about yesterday in yesterday's video she uses the watercolor pencils so there's that option as well but for me I'm just gonna use these and just do it slowly and enjoy it enjoy the process you know backgrounds are daunting for many I totally feel it I used to feel the same and I sometimes do still depending on whether I've got a plan that I think will work or not um, you don't have to do a background at all you can leave this white you could just color in this little fancy bit there and uh, just color the stars you know our hair's going to sit there looking very majestic whether there's a dark background behind him or not so there really isn't any need to worry too much now it's good to sort of slowly build it up don't put down too much colour we don't need it to be really dark and intense anyway Oops, I want it to be darker here and fade a bit towards the middle preferably not with a long line which I'm just going to erase <laughs> if I can find my eraser which I've thrown into my pencil case and now can't find oh, where are you? Hmm. There we go. There we go. Just go back 
over it a little bit and hope it's okay. Now, when you're doing a big area like this, it can be slightly more useful in some ways to have a less sharp pencil because you can cover more an area more quickly. But we've got lots of little details tails to work around. Oh, what's my post what my post hold on a minute. It was a very exciting sounding parcel, listen. Unfortunately it's not for me. So I can't open it. <laughs> Sounds good doesn't it? I'm gonna turn my book around a little bit to do this bit. It's a bit easier. My husband has been ordering things from Colt Pens so uh, they're for him, I think, not me. I'm not going to get excited. But it sounded good coming through the letterbox, you can imagine. Ooh. But he'll be excited. I suspect he'll give it to me to put away for Christmas. So if you keep turning your book, it can help. I hope it doesn't make you guys feel too dizzy. <laughs> thing. And, uh, yeah, he's... Uh, I think he ordered he ordered some more water pen brushes and some more sketchbooks I think. No he has many. But hey. I can hardly uh, say anything when I, I haven't counted how many colouring books I've got lately. I think it's best not to. I, yeah, it's not. They're all lovely. I will use them all. I'd love to finish them all, but uh, I'm not sure I have the time for that. But uh, I will uh, see how I get on. We're just working round and round to extend this a bit. Get me carried away. rather like this blue. It's almost a purpley blue, I think. So it should transition into the purple quite well. Now we need to really make sure we fade it quite a bit. So I'm just going to go around and do a, a sort of faded layer. How many colours I use in this will partly be dependent on how much space I have, how thick each bit is. It's not an exact science. And I'm not too worried about what we're going to end up with with regards to the number of colours. At this point, I'm just having fun. And the more you take it out and the more you fade it, the easier it is to blend into the next colour. Do you need to make sure it's dark to light. So. Now the stars, we haven't reached them yet, I'm going to colour over because I'm going to do them in, that's not faded enough. Um, I'm going to do them in um, I'm going to do the stars in pen on top after so I'm not going to worry about keeping them clear of pencil. It makes it a little bit easier, but they also need to stand out. And if I do them in pencil, they won't. Johanna, I think, did um, some interesting ideas for the star. She did them in a, um, um, a graphite pencil, which is quite an interesting idea because it's actually quite shiny. Graphite pencils are quite shiny. So uh, you get that sort of silvery shine, which I thought was very interesting. I'm not surprised that's the only post we've had. We've had two days of postal strikes. Just received one thing. Okay. Last week we had strikes and um, when the postman came on the Friday, Put him the right way around. There he is. Um, now I'm moving on to my purple, which is number six, which is the um, what's it called? Violet. I'm going to go over everything. 
Um, yeah, and we had all the posts from the whole, almost the whole week. It was quite funny because on a Tuesday we usually get a pizza menu because there's a two for one on a Tuesday and we got it on the Friday <laughs> so it's a bit late for them to advertise their two for one. So spade that in do you see? But um, anyway it was quite funny. I thought it was funny. I haven't had any adverts for old people's homes lately and what's getting those? I'm like, come on, not even 50 yet. <laughs> I guess it might be to put my loved ones in. My loved ones aren't ready for an old people's home by any stretch. So, uh, <laughs> Luckily, um, I have both my mum and dad, so if either of them's a bit off, they can look after each other, but they're not, they never go down with anything too nasty. Even when my dad had has had a minor operation couple lately, he's been absolutely fine. Um, only sort of cataracts and things like that, nothing. Um, Father-in-law has been slightly poorlier, but he's um, got a new partner and they look after each other fairly well. I say fairly well. They they look at after each other very well when they can, but sometimes they're both feeling a little bit off at the same time. But they do fine. We're very lucky. Don't really have to worry about them. Have enough to worry about with kids and the husband at the moment. Their boys doing their exams in the summer. Trying to keep them motivated and working. It's quite tricky. And then the um, husband is always full of work stress. He's telling me that he's getting bad road rage as well. He's terrible. I was saying to him how he'll criticise other drivers and then he'll drive worse than they did. Because he gets angry. And he was like... Yeah, I know, he said I need to work on it, and I'm like, too right. But anyway, he's to try and stay calmer. But um, I'm not very good at giving advice on that, because the methods I use aren't particularly useful for him. He doesn't like them, so I don't know. But anyway... He's, uh, he's putting the car in the garage tomorrow, so that's it. Always has its MOT in December. So uh, that's uh, that's fine. Has to be paid at some point. We're very fortunate this year. We're not having to worry about. Uh, about cutting back like a lot of people are so it's uh, it's really good and we actually don't usually spend out that much at Christmas really you know we entertain so we pay for food but then we often go out to places as well if you go to someone else's then they pay so you know it evens out a little bit and uh, and yeah, we do presents and cards, but we don't go mad, you know. It's uh, Some people do spend a lot of money, but we never really have spent loads. Okay, we bought the boys a computer last year, but they needed a new one. So we just made it into a Christmas present, just to make it sort of make Christmas more exciting for them sort of thing. We Now this is quite big here, it's getting smaller and smaller as we go around so I will um, extend it and tidy it up in a minute. But my one son wants a few computer games, he found them on special offer so that was good so we bought them already. Um, they're on, they've already, they're sort of downloads so he's already got them but he's not allowed to play them. My other son has got no idea what he wants so He's a bit trickier to play to a buy for. He may just have the money. We'll see. He's up to him. 
they're at that age where it's quite difficult to buy for them. And people ask for ideas and I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see. When their hobbies are always playing the same computer game and they've got had their new computer, what else do you buy? I think we're doing reasonably evenly. Come around here a bit. What I do is you can measure it with your finger. That, that's a bit short, bring that down a bit. Yeah, that one needs to come up a bit. Okay, and then we go for our lighter um, purple. This is the number 62, which is the, I can't read my own writing. It says lavender, I've written. I'm thinking that's lavender. <laughs> Again, I'm going to go all over all of it. Sort of blend it all together. Now there are brands of pencil that will blend more easily than the Ergosofts. Um, Prismas, for example. Arteza Experts, Castle Gold, those all blend nice and easily. But I still find these quite good. I'm going to just fade this right to the middle. I have decided. I'm just going to take it right through. Keep it fairly pale around this. And then let's see. So really quite light around our hair. Getting this quite even is really hard. You can see I haven't, it's not that neat, but uh, we'll get there. The um, Sometimes it's nice to just get a layer down and then um, sort of work out how to make it look better, as it were. We've got a blender and pencil blending solution. We can just do a few more layers. There's lots of possibilities. So I think I'm just going to go around and put the colour down and then get in there and tidy it up. Ooh, there's a very industrial noise outside. There's a big industrial monster eating up the road. <laughs> quite hectic out there, all the traffic, although we haven't sort of seen, today's going to be busy in town, got our, as I said, um, our light switch on, so uh, that always happens in our town quite late compared to other towns, right, I'm going to go back with every colour, so I'm going to start again with the blue, number 33, and I'm going to go back with, over the top, Fade it in. So yeah, it's uh, it's quite fun. Shops stay open till nine, things like that. However, there is my favourite. Oh. I am back. Sorry, the um, phone rang, and um, I went to get it, and uh, there's nobody there. But I uh, got distracted by a message from my brother-in-law. So uh, I was fiddling around on my computer for a bit, but I'm back to doing a background. Now it can be useful because this is quite a big area to colour, actually having a little break 
from it with the phone call. It's quite nice, you know, as much as I'm having fun with it, sometimes just having a little break, coming back can make a difference. What I'm trying to do here is to darken this blue a little bit on the edge, but also try and make sure it blends nicely into the um, purple so we don't have like a line. So we can just take it out as far as it seems to need to go until it looks... Have I just coloured over a bit of plant there? I think I have. Never mind. And <laughs> until it looks like there's more of a transition rather than a, a sort of big obvious clump of colour, if that makes any sense at all. Oh, I'm feeling cold today. Yesterday I actually put the heating on about this time of the morning because I felt chilly. But uh, I'm going to see, it might just be because I've moved. It's colder at the minute. But uh, I do have the heating set so it's not on all the time. I figure that if I can wrap up in a cardigan, I don't really need it on. So uh, we'll see. I might just start change the timer so it comes on a little bit earlier. Because at the minute it comes on at lunchtime for an hour. Maybe I should uh, put it on at 11 or something. Don't worry if your colours end up going much deeper in than originally planned. There's no rule. Just, uh, just have fun with it. And uh, just get it looking how you want. I've got no idea what colour I'm going to do these little flowers. See, I think you need some blue coming out here. I would uh, possibly have done them blue, but I can't really, can I? I'm just going to turn that to do this bit. Just going to bring that blue out a bit. So, anyway. Well, um... We're nearly there. Now when Johanna did her background on this page, she used some, um, um, what's it called, um, masking fluid over the top of all the little details so that when she used her watercolour on it, it didn't um, discolour everything. I tried that and I bought some for her tutorial and had a go with it but it was quite fiddly to actually apply it in the right places I'm not very good at using a paintbrush so um, it wasn't an awfully successful exercise to me and I, I sometimes wonder if it's worth doing it with pencil to sort of protect the areas that say if I wanted those white but of course I can use a white pen but uh, I sort of wonder whether it's worth doing or not as my paintbrush skills are not much good, I sort of don't think it's worth it for me, but I'm just sort of mentioning it because you might find it works for you. But I guess also I'm a bit too impatient to spend that amount of time fiddling before I get going. When I'm ready to colour, I'm ready to colour. I don't want to... I guess it's like when you paint your house. And you're supposed to masking tape things sand it all down, fill it and all that. Not very good at doing that. Just want to get a coat of paint on, get my wall looking cleaner and just move on. But uh, no, that isn't. My decorator was giving me a lesson in decorating. <laughs> He's doing the kitchen. Saying how people rush it and it doesn't look so good. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, it's getting you really out of shot now, aren't they? But, uh, um, yeah, that's me, I thought, rushing it, <laughs> not doing it very well. I did sand when I painted my bathroom ceiling. I didn't sand the whole ceiling, though. 
which I guess I should have done, only the bits that were actually, there were some loose bits which needed sanding. But uh, anyway, it looks a lot better. Probably a professional would notice that it wasn't done that well, but it um, covered up the, I, I washed off all the mould and got it all looking better anyway. Right, we're nearly there I think. I'm going to do my final layer with the uh, with this um, 62. Now I was going to do um, a pink bit in the middle but I don't think I'm going to bother now. I think I'm just going to keep it with these um, blue to purple. I think these were the colours that Johanna used for her sort of purple and pinks. Now, if you were using um, Stedler watercolour pencils, you could um, use these exact colours and uh, it would look a lot neater, I'm sure, than, uh, than well, than my effort. Now, when you've done this, if you feel like you want it to look smoother, you can try using a blending pencil, you can try using blending fluid, I'm not going to worry, to be honest. I think it's going to be okay by the time I've just sort of gone over it a little bit more. I'll be happy with it. I don't feel like I need it to be absolutely perfect. And I find with backgrounds, if you go over them with something, um, like little white dots or something like that, it sort of hides it a bit anyway and you can't see it doesn't the unevenness sort of disappears so that's what I'm gonna do show you in a minute I do need to be a bit careful there by his whiskers because I made them black and uh, I don't want to um, smudge that black too much into this purple because this is a sort of lighter area here Now what I am going to do in between videos, because this background is, once I finish this background I'm going to stop this video, is I am going to um, erase where I've gone over the lines into the leaves and flowers. Okay, I'm not going to do that on camera, but I'm just going to do it a little bit because it's looking a bit messy. That bit. I'm not very keen on. I'm trying to do a bit near it so it doesn't look so obvious. Now this at this point is where you can go over with a blending pencil. Um, I'm just trying to think whether to have a go. I have actually got a She Lies. I thought I had a Stedler blending pencil in here, but I don't. Um, what should we use? Could use the Prisma. Look at the end of my Prisma blending pencil. I think I shall clean that off. I know it's almost the right colour, but it's a bit dark, isn't it? Clean it off and sharpen it. There we go. And then you can just um, use it all over like this. And it will smooth it all out. Now the Prisma blender I find works with any brand of pencil really well. The Caran Dash blending pencil only seems to work with certain brands of pencil which I find a little bit strange. I used to have a Lyra Splendor which was a blending pencil. It didn't work with any of my brands of pencils despite everyone raving about it saying how wonderful it was. I was a bit confused by that but I've seen other people use them on videos and they do work. So yeah, I'm a bit confused, don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I don't, I don't know what I did with it, I got rid of it. I'm not sure what I did with it to be honest, it's a bit odd, anyway, maybe I gave it away to somebody, I don't know, but uh, yeah, the Prisma one I would recommend, although I don't know how pricey it is. Got the as I say the Caran Dash ones are good. Obviously they're pricey because they're Caran Dash, and um, they are um, they don't work on all things on all 
pencil type, so it's probably better to maybe not. I don't know. You know, if you've only got a few brands of pencil and it doesn't work on yours, that'd be a bit annoying, wouldn't it? So you can blend as much or as little as you like. Um, and you can even go back over with pencils after you've blended if you feel it needs it. I'm quite happy with how this is looking, so I'm not going to worry too much more. I'm going to sweep it off. There we go. Now we're going to add some details now. I'm going to start by making my stars white. But I'm not going to keep them as white. So I, but I want a white base. So I'm going to colour the whole thing white. Of each star. And you might think, gosh, that's a bit pointless. She coloured over it and now she's going over it in white. Yeah. I find it easier to get a more even distribution of colour if I colour over things rather than around things. So that's why I did it like this. But you know, you can you could leave it white if you find that that works for you. It's quite difficult to get these looking as pretty as Johanna drew them. Now you can see that's quite um, dark still it doesn't show up really white um but we're gonna as i say this is just gonna be our base i've got something fun to uh, try once i've uh, once this is dry so we've got to be a bit patient but in the meantime i'm gonna do get this and i'm gonna dot all over. And what I find that does is it slightly distracts from the messy background and helps you not to notice it. Sounds silly? Yeah. But it seems to work and it's snowing but it's going to be snowing all over even under the rabbit which is a bit odd but otherwise it would look a bit strange. I've done a dot on the rabbit that wasn't intentional. I really do just want to keep these on the background. I might be able to scrape that off when it's dry. Sometimes Posca, you can scrape it off with your fingernail. So that's always useful, right? Now I'm nearly there. There we go. Now they fade back a bit. They don't look as bright in the middle as on the outside, but I still think it works. Now, I am going to try this. This is 3D Pearl Effects. It's a Dove Craft Essentials. I was given this. I've not. Um, tr I've tried it a tiny, tiny bit, but not properly. So it gives a 3D, so it is 3D, so make sure you think about it before you use it because it's going to stand out on your page. Now I can get away with that in this ring bound book because I can tuck that right behind and not lean on it if it feels uncomfortable. Another way is you could put a big wadge of paper on top when you colour the next picture. What I'm thinking is when you take this, open it, when you colour this page, you don't want a big blob underneath, it makes it hard to colour, but with a wing bound book, as I say, I could just tuck that under and uh, not notice it. But I don't know how big it's going to be. So it's got a little tip like um, Stickles does. And we're going to just apply some only to the stars. Now it's a little bit of paint. I'm going to just try spreading it with the tip. It's quite a nice fine tip. Now I think this would be nice for um, jewellery and things like that maybe, um, but I just thought it would be fun to try out on the stars. Mm, I can't really see what I'm doing there. I lean forward and my light is in my eyes rather than helping me. Right, I'm going to move that bit around. That's too big a blob, so I'm just going to take some off and put it on here. Unfortunately, that looks a big splodge. I think it's probably better in larger areas, as most things would be. So basically, splodge a bit out and then spread it with a little nib. 
I don't know, it's this small one that's tricky. But I found them tricky even with the white pen to see what was quite going on. You could use bits of this to do the stars, the other stars as well, but I think I'm just going to limit it to these few. Try and make that look a bit more starry. They do look a bit splodgy rather than like stars, but I don't think it matters. Nice and shiny. If I tip that to the camera, you can see the pearly shine, which is rather cute and nice. And as I say, you could splodge that all over, but I'm, I think I'll leave it like that. So there is our background of our hair. And uh, we're going to come back and do this sort of border. As I say, I am going to come in and erase um, where I've gone over the leaves a little bit um, in between videos. And uh, I won't be able to do it that thoroughly, but I'm going to do the best I can. And uh, then we'll be ready for our border. So thank you for watching today. Um, have a lovely day and happy colouring.